mean, I, I've got a story coming on the 27-day hunt where I'm pinned down. I mean, all day, and I, I'm, I kind of like compare it to some war guy psyching out, you know, with a flashback, right. Vietnam flashback or something. They had me pinned down that whole day, and I needed water. I'd already needed water for a day or two, and I'd heard all the activity, and I stayed away from the windmills because of it. And, I mean, they pressured me hard one day with helicopters all around me firing buckshot. I had to stay in my camp, so it gets dark. And I start towards the windmill after dark to get water. This windmill had a lateral line in it. You didn't have to have the blade turn and the wind could die and you could still get water. So I went after dark and I was out away from any live oak cover about 70 yards. And they've been popping shots all day. There were ground units coming in and these big high rise gunners were shooting up all the predators. And the rumor I heard was they were thinning the hog, killing all the hogs, shooting the predators certainly, but they were shooting the guy too. They wanted to thin the herd and they were trying to manage it for big time whitetail hunting years to come. All right. They were shooting so much. It was ridiculous. Now, I mean, pop, 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 you know, and you hear the bug shot. Pop, pop. Yeah through them helicopter blades and i was a nervous wreck so i'm out there 30 minutes after dark i'm thinking they're all gone i heard all them choppers land on the trailers and leave out it'd been quiet for a while and all of a sudden an explosion occurs to the north of me about 800 yards up this grassy throat live oak big heavy live oak on both sides of that throat i'm at this what they call the parita windmill and just a bomb of light went off as I looked up, just a burst of light. And I thought, what in the hell? It shocked me. I didn't hear it coming at all. It was so low on the treetops, and it was just windy enough to cover his sound. And it was another chopper, and he turned. He had a big, huge dome light shining straight to the ground. And he came straight down that grassy throat right at me. He just turned and came right at me, and I went, oh, shit. I mm. thought they had me on a damn radar beeper screen, heat seeking something. Yeah. And so I ran that 70 yards around that water pool with my rifle and ran up in that uh, live oak, you know, that used to be in the middle of that windmill trap. And they got on me about the time I got 10 or 20 yards in it. And they were just shining that light straight down. Well, they came over that live oak knot, and I'm running to the back of it looking for thicker shinry, some short shrub to get in and hide better. And I got to a point where I just couldn't go any further. They were on me. So when they lit me up, I just fell over on my back, lay flat on my back, threw my rifle up right on them. I was fixing to shoot them down. I was, I had it. I was at my wit's end. And I said, they stall on me, I'm going to shoot them. I pushed my safety off. I had the crosshairs on the bubble. And they didn't turn. They didn't see me at all. They just, wow, right over me. They maintained the course to the northwest and left out of there. I mean, I was fixing to down that bird. Mm. I was sick. I was that cornered, that scared. <laughs> I, I just had it. My, my wits end, I, I was at the point, you know, vanishing point. You just explode. I'd have left that chopper buried in that sand dune next to me and got the hell out. I'd have swam the bay to get out. Yeah. But it was real hairy. That may be one of the hairiest experiences I've ever had. It probably, I, I think so. And I, I'm glad it didn't end in, in tragedy. But whoever those two men are that were in that bird, they know who they are. They'll know when they hear this podcast. Now, this is going to get out. When the book's finished and this is in there, it'll get back to them if they're still living. Now, this was in about 96, I believe. Nine, it could have been 95. But if they're still living, look at me and put two and two together, and they can see the time frame on that on the part two. Yeah. They'll know it was them. They'll know the flight they took, how they turned and came down that grassy throat looking for any predators that could light up and finish off before they headed towards the trailer. They headed northwest towards Sarita where they come off their trailer. They've been brought that bird in on. But I almost shot them down. I really think yeah. I would have if they stalled on me. I believe I'd have shot them down if they'd have stalled on me. I'd had it. I just was at the point I was about to explode, yeah. you know. I was in fear of my life because they'd been shooting all day. I thought they were going to shoot me. I thought if they saw me, they might just see movement in my head of hair. They used to have a big head of hair back then. Yeah. And I thought, they're going to see my head of hair, and they're going to shoot. <laughs> so I was thinking, it shoot first, you know, or die. Man. I mean, I was in that, in that vice you get in. Yeah. You know, when somebody points a gun at you, it does a strange thing to you. I've got stories, you know, like that. And uh, that's one of them. I thought they were going to shoot me, so I was fixing to bring the bird down. 